So now we want to see how we can implement the recursive functions that we saw from mathematics using the Scala programming language. So we started off looking at factorial, it's kind of the quintessential example that's used for this. And I want to just take this and convert it into Scala code. As I mentioned before, the Scala code is going to look very much like the mathematics. So I'll open the REPL here, and we're going to define, now, I'm not going to use bang for this. I'm not going to use the exclamation point. Instead, I'm actually going to call it factorial. It takes n, and at least to start with, we'll make n an int, and this function will, of course, return an int. And then we need to put in the what it's equal to. One thing I want to note Whereas with the functions that we talked about before, I said that putting a return type was just, it was a good idea. It was something to, that you should get in the habit of, but it wasn't required. For recursive functions, it is required. So if you write a function and it calls itself, you have to put in the return type. So this little brace here translates very nicely into an if. If n is less than two, well, what value are you supposed to give back? As the math formula says, one. Else. Well, in that case, we're going to produce n times factorial of n minus one. And there we go, we're done. So there's the, the math formula. The Scala is remarkably similar to it, uh, other, except other than having this curly brace for the different cases, we have an if expression that produces the different cases. And we can test this, make sure I didn't mess something up, factorial of five, which should be 120. Now, while we have the factorial up here, I'm gonna take a little detour and cover something else that's interesting. So, factorial is an interesting function in part because it grows so very quickly. 15, 16, hmm, that doesn't look any bigger. 17, okay, that's definitely wrong. Okay. What's going on here? Well, as we've seen before, ints are only able to store 32 bits worth of, of value. So they roll back over and go negative after something around 2 billion. So we can't calculate a very large factorial. And the factorial function grows so quickly that it might be nice to have a far factorial defined using a type that can get bigger. Well, we've talked about before the fact that the long type is bigger, has, has the ability to store larger numbers than int long has 64 bits worth of storage. So now I should have no problem calling 16, 20, what about 30? Hmm, nope. Even with longs, we can't go to the factorial of 30, which in some ways tells you something about how quickly the factorial function grows. But there is another type that's provided for you in the Scala libraries that you can use for this, and that is a type called big int. So, and we don't use this all the time because it's not built into the hardware, it's much slower, it uses a lot more memory. But if you really need to represent large numbers, the big int type can store pretty much whatever size number you want. It's only limited by the amount of memory in your computer, and how long you're willing to wait for something to calculate. So factorial of 50 is fairly large. What about the factorial of 500? You'll see here this, that by default it cuts it off. If we put it inside of a print line, the REPL won't cut it off. Okay, so there, was a few, there were a few extra lines there. What about the factorial of 5,000? Oh, <laughs> that one actually caused a, what's called a stack overflow. How about I do 1,000? There we go. So here is a number that takes up about a screen worth of digits, has a whole bunch of zeros down here at the end. Big int has no problem storing this, and you probably even saw it didn't take all that long for it to calculate. So if you have something where you need to use really large numbers, feel free to use a big int. What we care about more at this point is the fact that I could go through and multiply a thousand different numbers by defining a function in terms of itself. Okay, so this is the type of thing that I wouldn't want to type out by hand. I would not want to type this out as 
one times two times three times four times five times etc. Okay, especially not up to a thousand. For my five factorial, eh, no problem. But for larger values, it was nice that we could make the computer just do something many, many times for us. We'll come back and look at some other example functions in the next video.